Hey everybody, welcome back to GTEC. And in my last video, I put together this awesome 11th gen Intel and RTX 3060 gaming PC for roughly $1,300. And I based the entire build around the hardware that Iceberg Thermal sent me, namely the CPU cooler and one of the cooling fans that I put in there, because it's got this awesome teal and gray color scheme that I think just looks awesome. I had also secured an NZXT H210i for this build on my local used market, and I figured, hey, why not try and take this as an opportunity to learn how to case mod a little bit and do a little bit of case painting. And that's what I did. I just drilled out a couple rivets and I actually painted the cable bar as well as the front mesh ventilation to the same teal color as the CPU cooler. So if you haven't seen that video yet, make sure to check out the video in the top right corner up here because that actually shows how I went about building the system, whereas today I'm actually going to be benchmarking the system. I figure with a 6 core 12 thread Intel Core i5 and an RTX 3060, we should be seeing pretty respectable gaming benchmarks, right? Starting off with 3D Mark Firestrike, and this system pulled a whopping 18,133 points overall. And being that this benchmark is 1080p resolution, the RTX 3060 really got to show its power. The system fared just as well in 3D Mark Time Spy, which ups the resolution to 1440p. And overall, we got 8,574 points. In Unigen Superposition, I ran this benchmark in three different flavors of 1080p resolution and one at 4K. At 1080p medium details, we scored 14,876 points, upping the detail to high settings and we scored 11,190. And at 1080p extreme, we scored 5,021 points, but at 4K, we jumped back to 6,707 points. In Ashes of the Singularity, we didn't see too much difference between the resolutions as this is primarily a CPU dependent game, so we sat right around the 65 to 70 FPS mark in the Vulcan engine. Cyberpunk 2077, on the other hand, paints a bit of a different picture. At 1080p resolution, we averaged 117 FPS, with 99th and 95th percentiles as low as 77 frames per second. And increasing the resolution to 1440p, our average dropped all the way down to 102 frames per second, but the 99th and 95th percentiles stayed pretty close to what they were at 1080p, meaning that our frame rates are actually grouped a bit closer together. Also keep in mind that I had DLSS set to performance mode at both resolutions to give us a bit of an FPS bump. Now being that the RTX 3060 has ray tracing capabilities, I really wanted to see how it would fare in this game. And at 1080p, we actually stayed above 90 FPS at the medium preset. Even though the jump to 1440p certainly makes the game look a lot sharper, especially with ray tracing enabled, it doesn't necessarily do us justice in the frame rate department, dropping us down to 76 FPS on average. Now, a racing game like Dirt Rally at 1080p actually does quite well, especially with the ultra preset enabled. We were averaging over 140 FPS and our 99th percentile stayed above 100. And at 1440p, our average frame rate doesn't change all that much, but like Cyberpunk 2077, our 95th and 99th percentile get closer to our average, making the game more stable overall. Doom Eternal has to be one of my favorite games released in the past year or so, and this PC passes with flying colors sitting at nearly 240 FPS at 1080p with the high preset. And that's not even with DLSS enabled. Not much changes at 1440p. We still stay above 160 FPS on average with our 99th percentile staying above 110. And getting to play this game with ray tracing only makes me love it more. With RTX enabled and DLSS set to performance mode, we scored 215 FPS at 1080p. And at 1440, the game actually ran better than it did without ray tracing enabled and DLSS turned off, giving us about another 5 frames per second on average. Far Cry 4 is a bit of an older title, but still near and dear to my heart, and at 1080p with high settings, this system scored 154 frames per second on average, and staying above 110 at the 99th percentile. At 1440p, we were just shy of the 144 FPS mark, but still plenty respectable staying at 105 FPS for the 99th percentile. Grand Theft Auto 5 did great as well, and with the settings cranked, we were still sitting at 134 FPS at 1080p. And at 1440p, we stayed above 110, although we did drop to 82 and 72 FPS at the 95th and 99th percentile marks. You could very easily change just a couple graphic settings and get back up to that 144 FPS mark. An esports title like Rainbow Six Siege was no match for this PC, staying at 261 FPS on average and above 214 at the minimum. And at 1440p, we sat at 174 FPS on average, maxing out at 203. 
PUBG is still pretty popular today, and I'm happy to say that it averaged above the 144 FPS mark and stayed above 100 at the 99th percentile. And at 1440p, we were averaging just under 110 FPS, meaning you could play this very comfortably on 90Hz monitors. And the last game I tested is Risk of Rain 2, a game I love purely for the sheer amount of chaos and the fast-paced nature. And I'm happy to say that at 1080p with settings cranked, we were sitting at 175 FPS on average, with the 99th percentile sitting just shy of 100. And jumping to 1440p tells just about the same story, sitting at 140 FPS with the 99th percentile frame rates above 100. So there you have it. This system actually packs quite a bit of a punch considering its price range, and the addition of the RTX 3060 actually lets us get to try out some ray tracing titles. And considering how demanding ray tracing titles are, it's awesome that we also get to see Nvidia's DLSS technology to help up our frame rates. Overall, I absolutely love how this system turned out. I think it looks fantastic and it performs great. So I just wanted to give a big thank you to Iceberg Thermal once again for sending the CPU cooler and the cooling fan over. I've got a couple Iceberg Thermal products that they've sent me, which I'm going to be doing reviews of in the future, so you're definitely not going to want to miss those. But anyways, that's just about going to do it for now, so if you like this video, you know what to do, and if you want to see more stuff like this, make sure to get subbed down below, because I love making this stuff for you guys, and as always, have a good one. Honey, I'm a big